نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان بإحسان إلى يوم الدين فقد قال جل وعلا في كتابه المبين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن الليل فتهجد به نافلة لك عسى ربك أن يبعثك مقاما محمودا وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى الفجر في جماعة ثم قعد يذكر الله حتى تطلع الشمس ثم صلى ركعتين كانت له كأجر حجة وعمرة قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تامة 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 رواه الترمذي صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح ربي زدني علما اللهم صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم May they respected brothers and sisters in Islam We praise and we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us the tawfiq to go through many different topics of Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to the performance of salah, the commands of Allah, the sunnahs of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We spoke a lot about salah and in the last day session, we spoke, we began the discussion of the sunnahs and the nawafil salah. And we mentioned about the 12 rakats of the day and different rules pertaining to them. If we perform them, inshallah, we will be greatly rewarded. If we are continuous in its leaving out, we can be sinful because they are known as emphasized sunnah. And subhanallah, the reward for performing them, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, whosoever perform 12 rakats of the day, they will receive inshallah in Jannah a qasr and a palace. So therefore we try to perform those 12 rakats of the day, two sunnat before fajr salah, four sunnat before dhuhr, two sunnat after dhuhr, two sunnat after maghrib, two sunnat after isha, amounting to 12 insha'Allah. We as believers, we can perform salah whenever we wish, as long as the timing is not prohibited to perform salah. And subhanallah, any amount of salah that we want to perform, we can perform with regards to nawafil. And tonight we will mention some of the different types of nawafil and some rules with regards to them. And in other sessions, inshallah, we will mention separate salawat continuing on the topic of salah. So, Mawlana Shafari Tanwi Rahmatullahi Alayhi in the translation of his book Bahishti Ziwar, it mentions that if anyone wishes to offer more than those salawat that we have already mentioned about the normal salawat of the day, he can offer as much as he wishes whenever he wishes. However, he has to bear in mind that he should not offer any salah in those times when it is makru to do so like the three forbidden times, sunrise, midday, and sunset. And these times can be easily, can be readily available to us. We can find them very easily on salah charts, you know, Islamic finder, whatever Islamic, mashallah, app there may be, that we will know of these things. Zawal, very easy to also find, alhamdulillah, on the internet. 
We can find it inshallah, it's a, a few minutes, right? We are in it, it's not permissible to perform salah. And thereafter, when Fajr Salah comes in, not allowed to perform any Salah except the Sunnah of Fajr. Of course, we explain at, the, on the, at that time, we can perform Wajib Salah. And after the Asr Salah, we are not allowed to perform any Nafil Salah. All these based upon the traditions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, if a person did have time in Asr timing, they wanted to perform nafil before the asr, they can do so and then perform the farz of asr. Whatever salah apart from the farz and sunnah that he may offer is known as nafil. The more nafil salah a person offers, the more rewards he will receive. There is no limit to this. There were such servants of Allah in the past who used to offer nafil salah throughout the day, throughout the night, and they never used to sleep in the night. And uh, subhanallah, some of the pious scholars of the past, the pious people of the past, they would perform like 1,000 rakats, 1,000 rakats in the day. They would perform 100 rakats in the day extra to what they would perform with the fard and the normal sunnats. And we as believers have to endeavor and try to perform as much nafil and sunnah rakats as possible so that we can become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we have mentioned in the previous session about the tradition of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hadith Qudsi, wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that my servant continues to draw near to me with optional deeds until I begin, I begin to love him. And different virtues is mentioned in that tradition. So optional salawat, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we should try as much as possible to observe them. Some scholars never used to sleep in the past and... Uh, Sometimes we hear things like these. Sometimes we hear about so may we saw continuous fasting. Yes, you would see traditions of the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, wherein he has prohibited so may we saw. The point of mentioning, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is to teach us how much effort that people of the past and people of the present, masha Allah are making with regards to their effort of trying to become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So may we saw the scholars of the past, they used to do it. Because according to some scholars, it's permissible. It may not be recommended for those who are not capable of doing so, but with the right mentality, it can be done. Yes, Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam did mention to the sahabas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feeds me and he gives me things to drink. So therefore, do not do it. But there are other traditions to show that Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam allowed the companions to do it. Hence the reason that some of the scholars are of the opinion that it is permissible. And there are many traditions that we will see. That some sahabas came to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when they heard about you know, the, they asked the wife of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's actions, ka'annahum taqalluha, it is as though, you know, they considered it to be little. That Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam was doing a little amount, but that was, there was no problem there because he was the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But where are we? They said to themselves, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one said, I will fast and I will not break the fast. One said, I will perform salah all night long, I will not sleep. One said, I will not get married to women. We have to understand, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that in Islam, there's a space and an allotment for each and every single human being. Islam does not make it stringent for each and every single individual. Just as we say, different strokes for different folks. Not everyone can attain the gold medal. Not everyone can attain silver. Not everyone can attain bronze. 
but some people excel over some just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us in every different aspect of our lives whether it be in our household whether it be in our job places wherever we may be there are some people who will always excel over others sports running swimming all these different things other people will always excel in islam we must understand the the scholars have taught us my dear respected brothers and sisters that sometimes we may do something but it's it's our option to do it nabi alayhi salatu wassalam when he mentioned this to the sahabas I, when they said that i will not sleep in the night i get married to a woman i will fast and i will not break the fast nabi alayhi salatu wassalam is showing the moderateness of islam and everyone mashallah alhamdulillah they can come into islam and they need not be worried and frightened this religion of islam is too hard so i will just run away no mashallah five times daily salah is sufficient with regards to salat five times daily salah is sufficient but that is not all nabi alayhi salatu wassalam he performed the tahajjud salah and inshallah if we get the time we will look into some of the ahadith whereby he would tell the companions wake up and he would wonder about his wives why are they not performing the tahajjud salah though it was optional though it was optional because he understood the importance of the tahajjud salah so sometimes rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he chose and it was option it was his ikhtiyar and his choice that he did something it did not mean that it is essential and it did not mean that each and every single individual has to do it when they reach that stage then inshallah they can implement that in their life and they can thread that path inshallah and sometimes other people may not see it to be easy but when they reach a stage alhamdulillah it they may, they may find it easy and hence the reason why a sheikh many a times we are advised to get a sheikh a spiritual doctor a spiritual mentor because he will understand you know what this individual he is reading quran so much and so much i will tell him to increase a little bit and i will not tell him to increase more why because sometimes we realize we we get a josh alhamdulillah i wake up for tahajjud salah one night i wake up for the other night and tonight i'm going to go all out going to perform these rakats extremely slow concentrate on them and then after that months on end we don't perform it so sometimes we need a spiritual doctor you know the mashaykh to help us and assist us inshallah because constancy is more important than kathrat and plentiful and the amount and this is how our nafs plays with us our nafs plays with us in the sense sometimes it tells us mashallah sit and make dhikr tonight you are a big dhakir you are a big rememberer of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't sit for a hundred don't sit for two hundred sit for a thousand and that's good mashallah but then the mind seems like it gets so tired that the other night we will say we will take a rest inshallah a hundred every night we have 10 nights rest then we take 20 nights then we take 30 nights and it goes on like that so in islam mashallah it is a very easy religion many people alhamdulillah we can suffice upon the fara'id but those who want to go closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the nawafil we should try our utmost best and every single muslim should try their utmost best inshallah to go further and further and reach closer and closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the point that we are drawing at my dear respected brothers and sisters two things one sometimes we hear about you know people performing a thousand rakats of the day those people who are never slept for the night and a person the first thing comes to a person mind a person's mind is that is fanaticism that is not islam that is extremism no my dear respected brothers and sisters go into the lives of the sahabas the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam we will see where it came from and it is not about fanaticism 
It is about, mashallah, those who endeavor to become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They understood the value of time, whereby they did not even want to eat a comfortable plate of food like you and I. They preferred to chew upon the leaves of Bali so that they will get more time to do the dhikr of Allah. You know, sometimes we must listen to these ahadith, listen to the lives of these people and compare ourselves with it and see where we are from where they were, subhanallah. And we will understand that, you know what, mashallah, what I can be doing. And this is the point to be understood. What we, what we can try to attain and what we can try to achieve, we should try to go there. But the point is, why do some people automatically start to throw it off? You know, this is bid'ah, that is bid'ah, this is fanaticism, and this, is, this does not find any place in Islam. Do we know all the ahadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we can say that that does not find a place in Islam? And so many blessed souls Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with the performance of so many different salawat, rak'ats of salah in the day and the night. Subhanallah, they found it to be beneficial in their lives. They saw the benefit of it. They taught their disciples the benefit of it, subhanallah. So why should we not avail of that benefit also? Why should we not avail of that benefit? So, alhamdulillah, you know, with regards to these, these things, no one is say it, saying it is compulsory. But the more that we, the more we do, inshallah, the merrier. The more that we can do, alhamdulillah, it is more beneficial for ourselves. We can become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, if a person chooses to adopt that path, insha'Allah, then, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, it is good, it is something praiseworthy, and it is not that the person is doing something wrong. Sometimes, immediately, uh, we see a person with a tasbih in their hand, and they are doing the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly. We think that, you know what, don't do that. You know, you are doing too much dhikr. Alhamdulillah, in the morning, a little bit after Asr, a little bit after Fajr, right? In the morning after Fajr, in the evening after Asr. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. When we see our brothers and sisters trying their best to do the dhikr of Allah, do not say that they are trying to show off or, you know, you're just pretending to be a good Muslim and you will leave it off, surely. No, we should try to be encouraging, my dear respected brothers and sisters. We should try to be encouraging because probably one day we will hold it for half an hour, we will make dhikr for half an hour and then probably another day, you know, we will be able to go to 45 minutes and then it will go on like that. And you know, sometimes a person also, they start to get that type of indifference with regards to dhikr of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I asked the question, what did the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam mean? When he said, do the dhikr of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until people consider you to be a madman. Until people consider you to be a madman. Probably somewhat, mashallah, in this day and age, we see many of our kabir, their tongues are moving in the dhikr of Allah. If their tongue is not moving, they are doing kalbi dhikr. And in the past, mashallah, in the very recent past, you would hear about Elderly men and elderly women always, their mouths were moving in the dhikr of Allah. People, they, the women, they would be washing their wares, washing their clothing, cleaning up the house, and their mouths would be moving in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you ask them, what are you doing? They are doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, it is something that we have to endeavor, and when we speak about it, it's not about, this is what is fard, but mashallah, we should try to endeavor to do more. This is what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged us. This is what the Holy Quran encouraged us to do. This is what the Holy Quran, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has encouraged us. This is what the Holy Quran encourages us to do. A musabaqat, competition, and hastening towards good deeds. There are few nafil salah, the performance of which is greatly rewarded. It is therefore better to offer these nawafil salah as opposed to other nawafil salah. Due to a little effort, one will be greatly rewarded. These salawat are tahiyat al-wudu, ishraq, chashd, 
awabin salatu tahajjud an salatu tasbih tahiyatul wudu is after a person makes wudu he must offer two rakats of salah great virtue with regards to this salah has been mentioned in the hadith however it should not be offered at those times when nafil salah is makru it should not be offered at those times when nafil salah is makru there is a tradition reported by imam bukhari and muslim we mentioned it in our last day session rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to bilal inna salat al fajri at the time of the morning prayer ya bilal hadithni bi arja amalin amiltahu fil islam fa inni sami'tu dafan alayka bayna yadayya fil janna qala ma alim ma amiltu amalan arja indi anni lam athar anni lam atatahhar tahu tuhuran fi sa'at min al layl min layl wala nahar illa sallaytu bi dhalika at tuhuri ma kutiba li an usalliya muttafaqun alayhi the rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said to hadhat bilal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu at the time of the dawn prayer morning prayer they had performed the morning prayer at the time of the morning prayer at least bilal tell me an act which you have been doing after your embracing of islam and for which you hope to receive a heavy reward from almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why for i heard the sound of your sandals in front of me in paradise he said i have never done an act hoping it to be rewarding more rewarding in my eye than this this act that whenever i perform ablution at any hour of the night or any hour of the day i observe two op optional prayer with that ablution what is ordained for me to observe reported by imam bukhari and muslim in another tradition reported by imam tirmidhi rahmatullahi alayhi it is mentioned that hadat bilal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he was called by the rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was asked how is it that you went ahead of me in paradise means he was walking ahead of the rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it never happened that i entered the paradise and did not hear the song of your shoes before me he said oh allah oh messenger of allah i have never pronounced adhan without observing two rakats and it never happened that i needed ablution but i performed it and i thought that allah had made the observance of two rakats essential for me thereupon the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said yes it is because of that yes it is because of that because of these two rakats known as tahiyatul wudu that we my dear respected brothers and sisters we can perform when we perform our wudu after the completion of our wudu two rakats of salah known as tahiyatul wudu and at this point we make mention sometimes we are in the masjid the adhan has been called we we perform our wudu and we come to perform the sunnah of the salah the fuqaha have mentioned and the jurists have mentioned we can make intention inshallah for tahiyatul wudu tahiyatul masjid with the four rakats of sunnah that we are going to perform before the fard salah or the two rakats as the case may be or the two rakats as the case may be and uh, you know this is it will be fulfilled inshallah we will get the reward of our nafil salah we will get the reward of tahiyatul masjid tahiyatul wudu all these different rakats inshallah so tahiyatul wudu is comprises of two rakats 
And subhanallah, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam heard the footsteps of Hadrat Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Jannah. And he said, Hadrat Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it is highly possible, it is on account of this action that he thinks that he heard the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam heard his footsteps in Jannah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obviously would have loved that action very much in order for the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam to see a vision of this nature. Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his footsteps. So this salah, tahiyyatul wudu, can be performed at any time as long as it is not the forbidden times that we have mentioned. As long as it is not the forbidden times that we have mentioned. Sunrise, midday, sunset. When the Fajr Salah comes in, we may have performed our two rakats of Sunnah at home. Then probably we come to the Masjid, we make wudu again if the need be. We come inside the masjid, there is no tahiyatul wudu, no tahiyatul masjid. Because the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned about no optional salah, when a, his action was no optional salah, and he also mentioned no optional salah when the fajr comes in. Right? So this is tahiyatul wudu. Then, There's another salah, another nafil salah, another optional salah, known as salatul ishraq. It is offered in the following way. After the fajr salah, one should not get up, one should not get up from the musalla where he's performing salah. Instead, he should sit in the same place and occupy himself in reciting the Rood Sharif. Or the kalima, or do the dhikr of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, read Quran, whatever have you. He should not himself involve himself in any worldly talk, nor in any worldly activity. And then when the sun rises considerably, he should offer two or four rakats of salah. In doing so, he will get the reward after the fajr salah. He will get the reward of one Hajj and one Umrah. If a person gets occupied in some worldly activity after the Fajr Salah and after sunrise, he should offer the Ishraq Salah. This is also permissible, of course. However, the reward will be less. However, the reward will be less. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He mentions in a tradition, Man sallal fajra fi jama'atin. Whosoever performs the fajr in jama'at. Thumma ka'ada yadhkur Allah. Then he sits, remembering Allah. Hatta tatlu ashamsu. Until the sun rises. Thumma salla rak'ataini. Then he performs two rak'at. Kanat lahu ka'ajri. Hajjatin wa umratin. He will get the reward of Hajj and Umrah. Qala, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Tamatin, tamatin, tamatin. Complete, complete, complete. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Rawahu Tirmidhi. So, we perform the Fajr prayer wherever we perform it. If we can stay in the place and sit and perform and do the dhikr of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, until sunrise, that is best. If we cannot stay in the same place, what is being mentioned, it's not compulsory to do so, my dear respected brothers and sisters. What is being mentioned, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned the statement of sitting there doing the dhikr of Allah. So therefore, that is best. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his companions, this is from amongst their actions also. Sit after the Fajr Salah, do the dhikr of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we cannot sit in the place of prayer, sit somewhere else, do the dhikr of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a person cannot sit, they have to go to work, they have to get ready to go to work, they are doing things, they are traveling, no problem. We can still perform these two rakats 
ثم صلى ركعتين عند رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said we will get the reward of one hajj and one umrah inshallah complete 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 of course it doesn't mean a person will be absolved of performing hajj and that now a person should not go for umrah but alhamdulillah the reward and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so vast the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so vast that we can be sitting at the comfort of our masajid we can be sitting in the comfort of our homes insha'Allah and we can get the reward of one hajj and one umrah complete 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 as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned so this salah is known as ishraq salah it comprises of two or four rakats according to the different ahadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and again one cannot perform this salah whilst the sun is rising the sun must rise considerably and this is why the scholars have mentioned at least 10 to 15 minutes after sunrise at least 10 to 15 minutes after sunrise you know a person can perform the ishraq salah and if a person again does not comply with the statement of the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam to sit there in its place then of course no problem it's not that this is fard it's optional inshallah the reward will be less the reward will be less in another tradition rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said sitting with people who remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the, at the end of the dawn prayer the fajr prayer until sunrise is dearer to me than emancipating four slaves from the ancestry of Ismail salam, and sitting with the people who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the sunset until till the sun is set is dearer to me than the emancipation of four slaves it Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam here is showing the reward of doing the dhikr of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the Fajr prayer and after the Asr prayer. It's very, very rewarding to put the icing on the cake, my dear respected brothers and sisters. After the Fajr prayer, we wait until it is time to perform Ishraq and we can perform the Ishraq Salah, inshallah, if we have the time to do so and we can try our best to make the time to do so. There's another Salah after that which can be performed when the sun has risen considerably when it gets quite hot a person now can perform that salah that is known as salatul chasht salatul duha the nabi alayhi salatu was salam he entered into the house of Hadar Ummi Hani radiallahu ta'ala anha on the day of the conquest of Makkah he took a bath and he performed eight rakats and she says I never did I see a prayer lighter than these eight rakats and however Nabi alayhi salatu was salam did ensure that his ruku and sajda was performed in a comfortable manner and in another narration she called this salah salat al-duha in another narration she called this salah salat al-duha hadra aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she was once asked how many rakats rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to perform she said four rakats and he would increase to that whichever he wishes Four rakats, sometimes not only eight, it doesn't have to be eight, it could be less than that. Four rakats. And sometimes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would increase more than that. In another tradition, Hadha Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, 
He said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Charity becomes due for ev- with the break of dawn for every bone of the human being, every joint of the human being. Every utterance of Allah's glorification is an act of charity, saying Allahu Akbar. Every utterance of praise, saying Subhanallah Sari, is an act of sadaqa. Saying Alhamdulillah is an act of sadaqa. Saying La ilaha illallah is an act of sadaqa. Saying Allahu Akbar is an act of sadaqa. Enjoining right is an act of sadaqa. Forbidding from evil is an act of sadaqa. And will fulfill from that, fulfill all that insha'Allah will be sufficient for all that. The fulfillment of the charity that becomes due on all the limbs of the body, two rakats in the forenoon, which is known as Salatul Duha. So, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, in different traditions, he has mentioned about the different amount of rakats that can be performed. Four, eight, twelve rakats. One can even perform two rakats if they so wish. And this is known as Salatul Chash, Salatul Duha. It can be performed four rakats, four rakats. Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi is of the opinion, Salah of the day should be performed in four rakats. Optional salah be performed in four rakats. Four rakats by four rakats. And uh, it is very rewarding. When the sun has risen risen considerably, we mention about the salat al-ishraq. 10-15 minutes after sunrise. Then, when the sun rises considerably, 10-30 afterwards, you know we can perform salat al-duha. 10 o'clock, we can perform the salat al-duha. When the sun has risen considerably, as has been mentioned here, two rakats, four rakats, eight rakats, inshallah, we can perform four, four. If it's for the least two rakats we are performing, just two rakats, inshallah, with one salam, then all this will be rewarding. At least we are performing some amount. Then going on in the day, after the Maghrib salah, there one can offer at least six rakats and the most is 20 rakats of nafil salah this salah is known as salat al-awwabin hadha abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whosoever performed six rakats after the maghrib salah without uttering any bad words after maghrib then he will get the reward of 12 years ibadat reported by ibn majah whosoever rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said performs six rakats after the maghrib salah without uttering any bad word after maghrib then he will get the reward of 12 years ibadat Subhanallah, Salat al Awabin. It comprises of six and it can go up to 20. And many of the mashaykh, they are constant upon these nawafil salah, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Their great reward lies in their performance, inshallah, as we hear here, as we listen to the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the translation of which. A person will get 12 years, act, 12 years of ibadah, the reward of 12 years of ibadah, subhanallah. If we perform these six rakats after Maghrib, reported by Ibn Majah, and uh, some of the scholars are of the opinion that six rakats, inclusive of the two rakats of the Sunnah al Mu'akkada, some scholars are of the opinion, no. After the two rakats of Maghrib, which is Sunnah al Mu'akkada, then a separate six can be performed. This is known as Salat al Awabin. (laughs) 
if we cannot perform the six, of course, performing two rakats of nafil salah is virtuous, performing four is also virtuous. Whatever we can perform, we can try to perform at least two rakats, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Going on further, there is great further virtue in getting up in the middle of the night and offering salah. This is called tahajjud salah. This salah is most acceptable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one gets the most reward for this particular optional salah known as tahajjud salah. The minimum for tahajjud salah is four rakats. And the maximum is 12 rakats based upon the traditions of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If not, even two rakats will suffice. If one does not have the courage to offer it later, then he could offer it after the Isha Salah. However, he will not receive the same report, reward. A apart from the Tahajjud Salah, one can offer as many Nafil Salah as he wishes at night. One can offer Salat Salatul Hajjah, two rakats of Nafil Salah. We can just make intention and perform two rakats of Nafil Salah, which is optional. Again, as long as it is permissible time, allowed, allowable timing to perform Salah, we can perform Nafil Salah. So, with regards to the Tahajjud Salah, my dear respected brothers and sisters, there are countless rewards that has been mentioned. In the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the Tahajjud Salah. And He says, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَحَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكْ In the night time, perform the Tahajjud Salah. Asa rabbukum ayyabakatham maqaman mahmuda. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you an exalted position. And this was addressing the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanallah, Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam used to encourage that the believers perform the tahajjud salah. Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam has mentioned in one hadith, there are three groups of people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at them with pleasure. One, a rajulu idha qama bil layli yusalli. A man who stands up in the night observing the prayer. A man who stands up from amongst them, a man who stands up in the night observing the prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smiles at that individual who stands up and performs the night prayer. In another tradition, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nearest to his servant. In the jawfil layl al-akhir, in the latter portion of the night. فَإِنْ إِسْتَطَعْتَ أَنْ تَكُونَ مِمَّا يَذْكُرَ اللَّهَ فِي تِلْكَ السَّاعَةَ فَكُنْ If you are capable of being those who can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that hour, then do so. If you can be capable of those who can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَكُنْ This tradition has been reported by Imam Tirmidhi. And Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, is mentioning here targhib, encouragement. If we can do so, fakun, do so. Be from amongst those who can actually stand up in the night and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? At that time, a person becomes close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another tradition, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he said, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy. On a person who got up during the night, he prayed and he awakened his wife also and she also performed that optional prayer. 
And if, he, if she refused, he sprinkled water upon her face. And may Allah have mercy on the woman who got, on that woman who got up and observed the night prayer and observed it and awakened her spouse and he observed the, the prayer also. And if he refused, she sprinkled water upon his face, reported by Abu Dawood and Nasai. My dear respected brothers and sisters, these are hadith are about encouragement. A woman should not sprinkle water in a husband's face if she knows it will irritate him. Neither vice versa, whereby a man should sprinkle water in a woman's face if he knows she will become very agitated and she will not cook for him the next day, she will not want to speak to him. And this is what we were mentioning, my dear respected brothers and sisters, about being moderate. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam mentioned these things as a means of encouragement. But different strokes are different folks. Sometimes, mashallah, a person is reading a hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about like this. And you know, he gets married and he wants his wife to do this and he wants him and he wants to do it also. So he says, the first night with my wife, I will wake up, but she's very, very tired. And she, would not, she cannot wake up. Doesn't mean that we have to force them, inshallah. When they are motivated and they, they have, you know, it is instilled in them these qualities whereby they understand the virtue, then we can wake them, inshallah. And inshallah, they will not get perturbed and disturbed that we are waking them up. And how it, one way we can do that, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is read the ahadith of the virtues of the performance of the tahajjud salah encourage them inshallah and ask them if we can wake them up in the night but the point that has been made when we hear these hadith of the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam it does not mean that we have to force people this is the point do not try to do these things with people who are not accustomed to them otherwise we will think that we a man can become enraged i am waking you up to perform Rakat become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are becoming angry and ma'adhallah he, he divorces her because he thinks that you know what this woman cannot have iman and then all these types of fanatical statements starts to come out you know the point that we are making my dear respected brothers and sisters in as much as we mentioned before we have to encourage one another different strokes to different folks people who are, have now come into Islam Alhamdulillah, sometimes their zeal is there and they will do these things. But try to encourage people before we take these types of actions. And you know, it causes adverse reactions. And we see that they, they, are, you know, they don't want to perform nafil salah. They are angry with us. No, inshallah, encourage them and wake them up in a nice way. If water affects them adversely, do not sprinkle water touch them on their feet, their feet nicely inshallah, touch them on their body nicely. If they do not want to wake up for the tahajjud salah as yet, then we could encourage them, keep on encourage them, encouraging them inshallah. The most important thing, they wake up to perform the fajr prayer. That is essential. That is compulsory. They must wake up to perform the fajr prayer. So, who vex loss? The men, we have a responsibility to, with our wives that they must wake up and perform their Fajr prayer. We have a responsibility to perform our Fajr prayer. So this is something now whereby we cannot be lenient. Leave her inshallah. She is sleeping so nicely. She is my newlywed wife. And inshallah she will perform Fajr when she wakes up after sunrise. No, no. Amru bil ma'roof wa nahiyan al munkar. We have to do that. Performing the Fajr prayer there is compulsory my dear respected. Brothers and sisters, so again, the point is that yes, mashallah, we hear the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We want to implement it, but know how we are implementing it, inshallah, before we get adverse reactions. And you know, our wife does not want to sleep with us on the same bed because she fears we will wake up anymore in the morning. You know, all these different types of things, inshallah, but encouragement is important. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he was asked which supplication is more readily accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said that one 
which is performed, that dua that is made in the latter portion of the night, he also said that dua that is made in the end of the Salatul Maktubat, end of the Far Salah. These are times of where duas are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the latter portion of the night. We wake up, we can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our needs, to fulfill our needs, to bless the ummah, forgive the ummah, forgive the Muslims and help the Muslims who are in distress. And also after the far salah, we can also make dua. It is a time of acceptance of dua. There are many traditions, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that teaches us about the tahajjud salah. It tells us about how Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam used to wake up and perform the tahajjud salah. And subhanallah, it is something that was compulsory upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam before for the normal, normal five times daily salah. Tahajjud salah was compulsory on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So he would always perform the tahajjud salah. Right? He would always perform the tahajjud salah. He encouraged towards it. The sahabas used to do it. We should try our best to wake up in the night and perform the tahajjud salah. As has been mentioned here, the minimum is four rakats based upon the traditions of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The maximum is 12 rakats. If we cannot perform four, even then two will be sufficient insha'Allah. When we sleep and wake up, that's the best time to perform the tahajjud salah. Sleep and then wake up and then perform the tahajjud salah in the latter portion of the night. If we do not have the courage to wake up afterwards, we can also perform two rakats of salah in the night with the intention of tahajjud salah before we go to sleep and also we can have an intention inshallah to wake up our actions are by our intentions inshallah so if we intend to wake up and we didn't get up allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us for our intentions inshallah and if we if we do not wake up Again, we had the intention to perform the Tahajjud Salah. Some of the scholars, it is mentioned in their biographies, you know, sometimes they may be waking for the entire night doing ibadat. You know, sometimes they, in order to get, follow the Sunnah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would lie down, pretend that they are sleeping, or just take a little shut eye for a minute or two, wake up, perform some rakats, and then go to sleep afterwards. Wake up, perform some rakats, and then go to sleep afterwards. The tahajjud salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in the Holy Quran. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he mentions it and he gave targheeb and encouragement towards its performance in his ahadith, in his sayings. And subhanallah, so many nights Nabi alayhi salatu was salam used to perform the tahajjud salah. So much so, it even comes in traditions when he did not wake up for it, he would perform the qadha of it during the day, it's optional for us inshallah and we should try to encourage ourselves my dear respected brothers and sisters to perform as much optional salah as possible. We mentioned in the session about Salat al-Ishraq performed after the Fajr prayer, after sunrise. Thereafter we mentioned about Salat al-Duha, Salat al-Chasht, a very you know, later on in the day when the sun has risen considerably, 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock. And then we mention about Salat al-Awwabin after the Maghrib Salah. Thereafter we mention about Salat al-Tahajjud that is performed after the Isha Salah. We will continue inshallah in the next day's session with more on Sunnah Salah and Nawafil Salah. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.